Tonight, Obama reforms the NSA, or did he? Nearly all ATNs run XP, <laughs> really? And Sprint offers Wi-Fi smartphone calls and an open source thermostat that you can make. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, show five for January 17, 2014. I'm Shannon Morse. Let's get right to the tech feed. President Obama announced today changes to the rules for the National Security Agency surveillance. The president made concessions to critics, but few were satisfied. The NSA's phone metadata collection program survived, but now requires court approval for the NSA to access it. The tech industry, well, they were disappointed. They wanted the NSA to stop weakening security software and to stop exploiting American software products and websites for surveillance. The coalition of tech companies opposing the NSA surveillance programs including Google, Microsoft, Facebook, and Yahoo, issued a statement that said, in part, the president's speech was empathetic, balanced, and thoughtful, but insufficient to meet the real needs of our globally connected world and a free internet. Another revelation in the seemingly never-ending Windows Xpocalypse saga, as many as 95% of all ATMs run on XP. Yeah, it's true. There are over 400,000 ATMs in the U.S. alone with an estimated 3 million worldwide from the big banks to those that you see on the sidewalk or in convenience stores. The cost to upgrade each and the pure numbers of machines out there make this a daunting task. The upside is that Microsoft has extended the anti-malware support from April 8th of this year until July of 2015. Chances are this is not enough time for all of those ATMs, but I got to wish those IT guys good luck. Now, Sprint Wi-Fi calling may be coming to a smartphone near you, which will make them the second major carrier in the U.S. to have this option. According to Sprint training materials, the calls would require no monthly fee and must be made in the U.S. It would be available on new Android 4.2 devices or higher, as well as the S4 Mini and the Galaxy Mega. The calls won't count against your total minutes available and they cannot be transferred to CDMA. Android location services must be turned on to use it and a CDMA signal must be present for emergencies. Now coming up, Amazon is working on a way to predict when you want something without having to read your mind. They're working on that right next. Now, joining us tonight is Julio Ojeda Zapata, tech writer of the St. Paul Pioneer Press and the author of the new book, The Mobile Writer. Welcome, Julio. Today you wrote in your blog about Spark Devices, a Minneapolis-based tech company who built their own open source version of the Nest thermostat. So first off, I wanted to ask you, what is that thermostat? Well, it's, uh, it's a, a reasonable facsimile of the Nest thermostat, keeping in mind they threw it together in one day using readily available materials off the shelf parts. So it's not really a nest. It's just, um, it's kind of a knockoff of a nest, but it's fully functional. It learns, it, can, it, it has a readout. It's built of, uh, of wood and, uh, and acrylic. It's a nice looking device. And they, they made it to sort of prove a point that, um, you know, anybody with the right, with a little bit of expertise can, can do this themselves. And this is an open source device? Yeah, the, one of the points they're trying to make is that the Nest thermostat is kind of a closed ecosystem and, and um, Spark Devices is one of these Internet of Things companies that um, they're promoting open, open, open. And so they made um, a thermostat, they threw this thermostat together, but more to the point, they made available their designs and their code and so forth as, an, as open source so that anybody can sort of follow in their footsteps, replicate what they did and improve on it. I absolutely love this idea. I'm a big privacy advocate, and I feel like this is a major privacy advocate thing for them to build. Uh, but do you feel that this could be an alternative for you know everyday consumers to build? We have to keep in mind this is not a ship. It's not even close to being a commercial product. Yeah. But if you if you have, if you if you if you're a maker, if you have a little bit of expertise and you can tinker, you can throw this thing together in your house and and um, and have fun with it. And who knows, you know, somebody down the road might improve on it to the point where you can actually put it on store shelves. Um, uh, the company that made this is, is, is making that very point. If, if you apply yourself, use readily available technologies, the sky's the limit. You don't have to be this closed Apple-like Nest ecosystem. You can do things uh, in an open way. 
I absolutely love it. I'm totally going to build one of these myself. Thank you so much, Julio. It was great to talk to you, and it was great to meet you finally. And yeah, finally, I'm a fan. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Have a good day. <laughs> See ya. And finally, our last story of the day. Same-day shipping is too slow for Amazon. So the company was granted a patent last month for shipping things to you before you order them. Called anticipatory shipping, the idea involves applying machine intelligence to customer behaviors such as previous orders, product searches, wish lists, shopping cart contents, returns, and even how long your cursor hovers over an item on the Amazon.com website. Computers crunch the data and Amazon ships what it thinks you order, but keeps the package in a nearby warehouse or on the truck until you actually order it. Now, when you do, you'll get it in hours or even minutes. That's kind of creepy. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. I'd like to thank you and also Julio again for joining us. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast at twit.tv slash TN2. Our next newscast is Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific. I'm Shannon Morse. Stay classy, internets. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.